There are two ways to write off uncollectible accounts, the allowance method and the direct write-off method. Only the allowance method is in compliance with GAAP. Under this method, the company estimates what portion of its receivables will be uncollectible. The estimates are based on a company's prior receivables collection experience. The accumulation of these estimates is reported in an account called Allowance for Doubtful Accounts, which is a contra-asset account. The Allowance for Doubtful Accounts has the effect of reducing the overall account's receivable balance to what is referred to as its net realizable value. Net realizable value is the net amount a company expects to receive in cash from its receivables. There are two main benefits to the allowance method over the direct write-off method. First, by requiring that bet debt expense be estimated each reporting period, the allowance method better matches revenue and expenses. Second, by using the allowance for doubtful accounts, accounts receivable is reduced to net realizable value, which ensures that the book value of the accounts receivable carried on the balance sheet is reflective of what the company actually expects to receive in cash. Suppose that a company has accounts receivables totaling $1 million. The company determines that $40,000 of its account receivables may be uncollectible. This estimate is based on past experience that 4% of accounts receivables becomes uncollectible. The first entry would involve increasing bet debt expense and generating an allowance. The allowance will be a contra asset account to accounts receivable. Suppose that a customer who owed the company $1,000 actually goes bankrupt and will not pay any of the $1,000. At this point in time, the allowance, which represented only an estimate, has become certain. Therefore, the allowance can become an actual write-off. One of the methods for estimating bet debt expense is the percentage of sales method, which computes bet debt expense as a percentage of net credit sales, which is the portion of sales made on account, not for cash. This percentage is based on a company's prior collection experience and other relevant factors. The percentage of sales method adopts an income statement approach to estimating bad debt, since it treats bad debt expense as a function of sales. Bad debt expense is simply the amount that results from multiplying net credit sales by the historical collection percentage determined by the company, which includes considerations such as current customers and industry conditions. Suppose that Fusco Body Works reports $2 million in net credit sales for the calendar year ended December 31st, 2018. Based on past collection experience, Fusco estimates that 2% of net credit sales will become uncollectible. Fusco would compute bet that expense and the allowance for doubtful accounts as $40,000, or 2% of $2 million. Another popular method for estimating bad debt expense and uncollectible accounts is the aging of receivables method, which utilizes a report that classifies customer balances by the length of time those accounts have been unpaid. This is based on the simple notion that the longer a balance is due, the less likely it is that the company will actually be able to collect. Assume that Fusco Body Works categorized the age of each of its customers' accounts based on whether the amount due is less than 30 days old, between 31 and 60 days old, between 61 and 90 days old, or over 90 days old. Each category is then assigned a percentage of uncollectability. The younger balances, those less than 30 days old, are estimated to be 1% uncollectible or 99% collectible. On the other hand, accounts receivable balances beyond 90 days are deemed to be 50% uncollectible.